Hello, I'm Carlos, one of FESA's expert technicians. Today, we will disassemble and assemble a wheel end hub in a housing like the one we have over here. In FESA, apart from manufacturing all kinds of industrial bearings and commercial vehicle bearings, we do design and manufacture specific tools to facilitate the disassembly and assembly of our bearings. With this tool, we dismantle the outer tracks, which are placed inside the hub. With the help of these plates, we will easily make the placing and assembly of the bearing in the housing. In addition, we have specific grease that improves bearing performance in different applications. Now, we'll go to the press to make the disassembly and assembly of a wheel end kit in a hub quite similar to this one. For disassembly, we will need a hook, a screwdriver, a hammer, and our FERSA toolbox with anvils and plates adapted to each diameter. Firstly, we will remove the lock ring using the hook. Then, with the hammer and the screwdriver, we will apply light blows. First, we will extract the cone from the outboard side. Secondly, we will turn the hub to extract the cone from the inboard side. When with the disassembly, we'll clean the hub well, making sure it is in perfect condition. Then we will turn the hub and we will move it to the press. With the help of the extendable anvil and the push bar, we will first extract the ring from the outboard side. The push bar is removable, so you can adjust it to suit your needs. We highly recommend starting the disassembly in this order to reduce the number of turns we have to give the hub during the replacement. In this way, we will end up with the hub correctly positioned to begin the installation, reducing the number of steps during the process. Now, we will turn the hub and return to the press without board side up. Again, using the extendable anvil and the push bar, we will extract the ring from the inboard side. Before applying pressure with the press, we must ensure that the tools are centered. This simple act ensures the disassembly and leaves the hub and tools intact. Once we have the hub completely empty and clean, we start installing the new bearing. Before starting the installation, you should carefully read the instructions we included in the box, where we will give you recommendations during the assembly. In addition, the box indicates you whether it's the inboard or outboard part of the bearing. Pay attention to the stickers. On them, we indicate the most important steps to consider during installation. For the assembly, we will start with the outboard side. Inside the bag, we will find the security ring, the outer seal, the bearing, the assembly tool and the actual seal. The piece is marked to avoid mistakes during the process. First, we'll go to the press. There, we will fit the outboard bearing using a plate and applying a pressure up to 60. Remember to put the plate with the indent upwards. With both hands, we'll remove the assembly tool and place the seal. FERSA has different types of seals depending on the axle type of the final application. For driven rear axle, FERSA has two types of seals. An oil seal, which should always be fitted with a metal hollow side up. A 
and a cassette seal, which should also be fitted with a metal side up and that has a number of advantages over an oil seal. For non-driven rear axle, we must bear in mind that unlike the previous seals, it must be installed with the metal hollow side down. Only then we will get the maximum tightness. We'll turn the assembly tool and, placing the plate in the correct position, we'll apply force in the press up to 1T. Once the ceiling is punched, we'll remove the assembly tool and we'll make sure it is properly installed. Then, we will turn the hub and we will check that the axial seal is correctly positioned and that the bearing has stayed in its place. Once we have verified the outboard part, we start with the assembly of the inboard part. The inboard bearing consists of an inner side seal, first as mounting tool, and the O-ring in the inner bearing. In order to assemble it, we will use the same plate that we used previously and will apply a force of up to 60 with the press. Once installed, we can extract the plate and, with both hands, we'll remove the assembly tool. Then, in order to install the seal, we'll return to the assembly tool and, using the plate, we'll place it in the hub, checking that it fits correctly by turning the tool. Once the seal is in place, we'll remove the assembly tool and make sure it is properly installed. Finally, we'll check that the O-ring has been installed properly. All that's left is to place the safety clip and check that it has been properly positioned and can rotate. We hope these tips have helped you. For more information, visit our website. The most important thing for us is to make your job easier. FASA Bearings, your friend in the workshop.